Hi everyone, uh, my name is Doris Lee and I'm a product manager for Snowflake Notebooks. In this tutorial, we will walk you through the different ways that you can enrich your data narrative through engaging visuals in Snowflake Notebooks. We will demonstrate how you can develop visualizations, format your text with markdown cells, embed images, and build awesome data apps all within your notebooks alongside your code and data. So let's dive right in. So what I have here is I've, I have my Snowflake notebooks pulled up. And specifically in this tutorial, I'll be using this matplotlib and plotly packages. So I'm going to go to, on to the top right hand corner and then add in matplotlib and then plotly as the two packages. And you can see that I've added those here. So I'm ready to start my notebook session. Uh, this is going to take a couple seconds to pull up. But essentially what this is doing is it's establishing a connection with my notebook. And you see that notebooks are, is already prepackaged with a bunch of these common data science libraries that you use. So with Snowflake notebooks, it's really easy to get started. I don't really need to worry about configuring or setting up my notebook session or managing package installations. And now we have our notebook session active and I can start running my cells in my notebook. So the first thing that we're going to do here is just import a couple packages, pandas and streamlit. And then the first thing that I'm going to show is how you can build data visualizations using your favorite Python visualization libraries inside of notebooks. We're going to generate some toy data sets for the iris data set. So we can see that these are the three species for iris and then the different measurements, uh, sepal width, petal length, and so on. And then the, the values associated with that. So the first library that we're going to take a look at is Altair. And we can just build a chart with Altair. And this is an interactive stacked bar chart. I can hover over each of these to look at the individual values. And then I can do exactly the same chart with matplotlib. With matplotlib, the thing that I can do here is I can use pandas to pivot my data frame and create a pivot table. So if I do that and, and create a pivot table, I'm going to really quickly show you, this is what the old data frame looks like uh, on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, this is what the stacked uh, pivoted data frame looks like. And this pivoted data frame is the one that we're going to be using for the visualization. And so with the pivoted table, it's actually really, really easy to create a stack bar chart. All you have to do is the df.plot with pandas, um, and that automatically calls matplotlib underneath the hood. And you can see that here I have my stacked bar chart. Now we're going to repeat that same exercise with Plotly. And so you can use Plotly to plot the same visualization, again, a stack bar chart. So in this second part, I'm going to show you how you can develop your narrative with Markdown Cells. Markdown Cells is a very convenient way for you to create formatted text and rich text displays. Uh, so for example, as you can see here, I can create top level headers, second level headers, our, our h1, h2, and h3 headers using the hash command. And here I'm showing what the headers look like as well as the markdowns. Other thing I can do is I can do inline te text formatting. So I can create italicized text as well as bolded text. And then again, here, here is what the markdown looks like. I can also create hyperlinks. And this is how you would do hyperlinks with Markdown. And from here on, I'm not going to show you all the Markdown because that would be a lot, of, a lot of code to show. I'm going to actually show you how you can see the Markdown yourself by double clicking into these Markdown cells um, and taking a look at the underlying Markdown content. So in this case, this is a bulleted list. I've added a couple emojis in there. And if I click, OK on this, then you can see this as the rendered list. Now, the one thing I hadn't show you was how you create a markdown cell. So let's say you create a new cell. Um, and this cell is actually, by default, a SQL cell. So 
I can start typing. Here is some markdown text. And then maybe I'll do some inline formatting. I can change my cell type to markdown so that this is rendered as a markdown text. The other thing that I could also do is I can use the keyboard shortcut. So let's say, again, I have a SQL cell or I have a Python cell. I can, I can press Escape and then M to convert this cell into a markdown cell. So keyboard shortcut, M, or click on the dropdown. So the last thing I wanted to show with markdowns is that you can actually do code st styling and formatting with markdowns. Uh, this is really convenient if you want to embed code alongside your code and data narrative. So in this case, I have a very simple Python code example and a very simple SQL example. And if you want to show these code blocks, you can use the triple ticks. And then you specify that this is a Python or a SQL, and that allows us to do the, the code formatting. The other thing that is often really useful is doing code formatting in line. Uh, so for example, I want to refer to my database.schema. In this case, I use the single tick to, to wrap around the code that I want to be formatted. And again, if I click OK, this is what the code looks like after the formatting. In this next section, we're going to take a look at how you can use Streamlit to build interactive data applications embed images. And uh, Streamlit is an application. It's an open source library that allows you to build uh, visual data apps. Unlike in other notebooks where you have to go to a different interface to serve up your Streamlit app, in Snowflake notebooks, um, Streamlit applications are rendered directly in the notebooks, which means that it's very easy to develop and test your Streamlit applications directly in your notebook. And we'll see an example of this. So first, uh, we want to import Streamlit. Here, I'm going to show you examples of how you can embed images in your notebook using Streamlit. So here, I have a link to the Snowflake logo. And I can render this image directly using the st.image component. This even works with GIF animations. So you can embed really cool sort of animations. And the other common example that we see is, let's say I have some sort of images in my Snowflake stage. So in this case, I have a stage. The name of the stage is called image stage. And I have the Snowflake logo PNG file in here. Now, the way I can do this is I can use Snowpark to get the file stream of the logo.png file. And then I can use st.image, the streamlit image component, uh, to display that. This is how you can use st.image to render an image with a an URL or from a Snowflake stage. Now, in this next section, I'm going to show you how you can build an interactive data app with Streamlit. And the way I think about Streamlit apps within notebooks is you can think of each of your cells essentially as a mini Streamlit app. And as you're interacting with your data app, the relevant cells below gets re-executed and the results update automatically. Uh, so we'll see an example of this in action. And so in this particular cell, I have a couple markdowns, and I created a slider using the st.slider component. And you can see that on my SD slider component, the value of this slider is stored in this value Python variable. If you remember earlier, we had this iris data set. And the iris data set had a bunch of different values. We want to use this slider as a way of filtering this particular data frame. So you can see that here I'm using pandas to filter this data frame and then sort based on value. So it's returning all of the rows that is greater than this value. And this value is currently set as 4.4. And then finally, I want to run and build this visualization. We saw this as an example earlier of how you can create a visualization using Altair. So this essentially puts it all together. And so I'm going to change my slider value. And you can see that the result 
changes as well as this visualization gets updated. And every time I change the slider value, you can see that the cells below gets executed. If I change the slider value to a very high filter value, I don't have a whole lot of rows left. And then I am plotting this as a bar chart. Yeah, so this is an example of how you can build an interactive Streamlit app directly in your Snowflake notebooks. So in this demo, we took a look at how Snowflake Notebooks makes it easy for you to weave together your data story by integrating code, visualizations, images, interactive data apps all in one place. Notebooks is a great medium for sharing and presenting your data-driven narrative, making it easier for your stakeholders and collaborators to gain deeper insights into your data. If you like this video, don't miss out on our Notebooks playlist here to check out more videos like this. And remember to like and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for the latest video on how you can supercharge your data workflows with Snowflake. See you in the next video.